Thrifting is therapy, everyone. Thrifting is therapy, don't forget. <laughs> These mugs are available in my web shop. Ding. Dicer, grater, peeler, all in one. Never need sharpening, dishwasher safe. Wow. No, but really they are. I have like three coffee mugs that are for sale in my web shop and they're all thrift related. I just do those because it's kind of fun to have merch <laughs> just for whatever reason. I'm, I, I don't know why, it just seems fun. What I would like to do this week, I pinned a bunch of pins to my pin board, a fashion that inspired me that was autumn winter collections of 2024 and that you can uh, get inspiration from. And runways are hit or miss sometimes. You can see stuff on the runway and you're like, that is ridiculous. <laughs> You can see stuff on the runway and think, wow, that's so inspiring, but that looks expensive. Or you can see things on the runway or in like ready to wear with a lot of these designers and they've put it together these amazing outfits that we could really take inspiration from. And what we're really looking at here is what the outfit is saying. So is it like a grunge look? Are we going loosely with grunge and plaids again? Is this more of a dreamy ethereal look? And so you can take inspiration from it. And this is the, uh, all of the stuff that I'm gonna try to put outfits together from things that I've already thrifted or own. And then we're going thrifting for anything that I don't have that would complete the outfit. And we're gonna try to put this all together into a lump sum of all of the looks that I loved the most. Anna Sui was really bringing it for me in autumn. I loved this library background that they had for their runway. I don't know if that was a real library or where that was held, but I have something Anna Sui. My little Anna Sui powder holder. Isn't he so cute? And then it has the little powder poof that says Anna Sui on it. And then I put pure translucent powder in it. And it's the cutest thing. And after seeing, sorry, I'm drooling because I can see my coffee. <laughs> but I loved everything that Anna Sui had going on for autumn this year. So I'm like, is this my taste? Do I love this brand? Do I need to start looking on the real real for stuff from Anna Sui? Because I love it. It's very Seattle. It is totally a mix of like grungy stuff with satins and mixing fabric and I loved this paisley shirt underneath this silk slip dress and I have been on the hunt for a slip dress for quite some time a black one specifically they're very hard to find you wouldn't think it but they are they're very hard to find but I'm gonna look today for a slip dress so that's on the list I love these plaid pants I do have a pair of plaid pants they're a little bit snug on me though can find another pair great if not I can still accomplish the look with the ones that I have the next look Alice and Olivia I've always liked Alice and Olivia I have a couple of their pieces that I've purchased before I would say their style is more retro that's my personal take this as my personal opinion it, you might not agree you might not whatever there was a lot of black and white going on all together with every designer there was entire collections there were a lot of black and white I was trying to find things that weren't black and white because I didn't want everything I'm doing to be black and white I wear a lot of black for work I wear a lot of black a lot of the time. I love the bow. I loved the just shape of this and the legging. So I'm gonna look for something that I can make a big white bow with, but I think I can kind of replicate this look. I don't have a cape style dress like that, but I think I can do something similar. Okay, Ralph Lauren was hitting the mark for me. It is equestrian. It is kind of autumnal already. So anything you see Ralph Lauren is gonna be on that borderline, almost like equestrian country wear, I think. But I still really like that. I mean, I love cowboy boots. I love wearing things that look Western. I love this turtleneck underneath this jean long sleeve. I love the belt with the double buckle. I don't have anything like that, but I'm gonna try to replicate it. And I have that new dress that I just got that looks similar to this pattern. I doubt I would find a skirt that looks anything like this, but I think I could use that dress and just put a jean jacket over it. So we're gonna play with what I already have, but I'm gonna take a look at the thrift store and see if I can find anything. I mainly need to find a jean long sleeve. Tom Brown is amazing. Tom Brown has all of these bug-like, alien-like models going down the runway. Very strange, almost Beetlejuicey, which is trending obviously right now because of the movie. Yeah, it just looked really kind of creepy. Lydia Dietz vibes and this definitely hits those marks. I love that it looks Chanel-y though, so it's like this boucle fabric black and white chanel style almost jacket i love the the length a lot of long jackets and long things happening which i'm all about with jackets i love like 
jackets that go to the floor. So this is really, really nice. And I love that pop of red on the lip, the veil hat, everything about this is really nice. So I need to find, I have nothing except for maybe a black long dress like this. That one's gonna be the biggest challenge, I think, trying to find anything like it. And if I don't, I'm just gonna take it out of the final result. This Lueve freaking outfit. This long tuxedo, as I was just saying, this look is beautiful. It's beautiful with the floral long dress underneath, or it's obviously a skirt because the top is a shirt, but it's a really long to the ground floral skirt. So I am gonna try to find a long skirt like that. I just have my Prada sport coat, which isn't long to the ground like this, and I'm not gonna find a tuxedo jacket that goes all the way to the ground. So I think the best bet will be just to try to find a floral skirt that goes all the way to the ground that's really long, or a dress that I could wear underneath the Prada sport coat. I think that would be a really nice look. So I'm gonna try to replicate this, but obviously because of the styling I can't replicate this to, to the T because these two pieces or three pieces are very very particular but I, I could totally draw inspiration from that concept and I love that so let's uh, dive into this week welcome I'm excited to have you and I'm gonna uh, go get ready to go to Pilates and I look so cute I'm gonna ruin my hair with sweat <laughs> So since the thrift store that I tend to go to the most is located over by my Pilates studio, I keep going thrifting in my workout wear, which isn't ideal. I really do prefer to wear like a cute outfit, have a coffee, make it a thing, you know? And since I've just been trying to kill two birds with one stone while I'm over in that area, it's been this. And then I'm just gonna make a smoothie. All I usually do when I'm going to Pilates, I don't like to have too much food in my smoothie, but I need the protein. So I just do the powder with yogurt and like a little bit of oat milk. Okay, but I gotta go. We're gonna do literally just kefir, milk, just to kind of keep it from being too thick. The oat milk just kind of makes it less thick. And then a scoop of protein powder. Either I'm getting more in shape and these classes are getting easier or the last couple of classes were for newbies. Anytime there's somebody in the class that I kind of don't recognize or I can hear her giving the spiel like it's their first time, I always assume that I always assume that those classes are going to be um oh yeah, it, it felt like a pretty breezy class for me. So I, I figured it was because there was a new girl in it. But we'll see if like I get into a class where I know everybody's been in there before with me and because I know that she does harder classes when everyone in the classes is not brand new to it because there's been some that have kicked my ass and I haven't been able to get up and like walk the next day so and one girl in the class said last week the class that I was in she said really kicked her butt and I'm like it didn't kick my butt does that mean am I am I like getting in shape <laughs> is my muscle awakening within me because uh it's been dormant for quite some time and i'm loving it i honestly i wish that i could afford to go twice a week but it's a big expense to go that many times that's like a whole car payment every month to be able to go that much. But that does remind me that I wanna at least sign up for next week's class. Just to make sure if I can go every week as many times as I can, like if I get a really big like payday with, um, <laughs> you know, like a big wedding, then I'll pay for like a couple classes in a row. What day do I wanna go? Anyway, I'm gonna go thrifting. We're gonna go look for these things on the list. I'm very excited. Pardon me. I'm very, very excited because this is my first like autumnal thrift haul this year. Oh, it's so exciting. And I feel really good about getting rid of three bags of stuff last week or two weeks ago. So I feel less guilty when I continue to thrift shop. As long as I'm interchanging what, I, what I'm 
what I have in my closet and really wearing what I have and then putting on my web shop whatever I'm not wearing but I still think is great then you guys can shop and it's a win-win but I'm really trying not to like hoard or like overspend so I'm gonna try to do a lot of budget shopping today too I want to hit all of the sticker prices that are on sale today I want to make sure I'm really looking out for those I definitely successfully scored. I actually went around so many times because I had so many things that I wanted that I had to do the put back like three times. But I just felt like I was in one of those moods where I felt like I can make things work and I had to rethink just because it works doesn't mean I'll wear it. Like will I really truly wear it or am I just getting it to make it look like the outfit? The, the options in styling is definitely way more fun autumn winter. I will say that. So yeah, I'm just excited to piece it all together. I've photographed everything and I'm ready to uh, shoot this. I'm just gonna pick up some ready-made lasagna from Metropolitan Market. They have like the best like deli food section where it's pre-packaged and pre-made. Everything is really, really good. It's an expensive store for that reason. Like it's really high quality foods. So I'm gonna get like the family size lasagna and a Caesar salad. And that's gonna be dinner for tonight. 86 degrees and there's a dog in a car. I hate that so much. started here. I feel one of those mornings where I can just take my time and do anything and then before you know it it's 4 p.m. and I'm like what did I do? Where did the day go? <laughs> so I'm gonna just get into it okay? Oh I forgot I have these ones. Okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about really quickly about what I have on my face because I have said I will start to update you guys on the makeup. Also I have one of those like really scary looking red blood clot things and now I know for a fact that it comes from a specific exercise that I do in Pilates where we have the entire machine in front of us and we're doing a lot of these and where I have to do any upper body like pulling back and forth exercises. I felt the strain. I felt myself like ugh like really straining and I woke up with this and I know it's from Pilates and this is the second time in a row that I've had that and um, I'm, I'm certain it's from doing that that specific type of exercise. So good to know to not like overdo it in Pilates. I'm just really trying to like get the workout so if I don't feel the burn I feel like I'm not doing it enough and I'm like harder harder in my head. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's just because I really want to feel the burn. This is Evil Twin, and this isn't, I don't think this is, you can get this anymore. It's an old liquid lip by Too Faced, and it's like a black berry. It really looks just black, but it, it's in this thing, if you kind of look at it through a light, it has like a purpley hue to it, and I love it so much. It's my favorite black. Look how white my teeth look. <laughs> Make sure teeth because it has that purple undertone and purple based things will make your teeth look whiter just as a note if you wear anything that's orangey and warm based it will make your teeth look yellow as hell whiten them before you plan on wearing that orange lipstick but if it's got a purple base it always makes your teeth look so pearly white because i know i'm due for a brightening <laughs> i know i'm due for some whitening for sure but anyway that's just a little tip if you're trying to get like the whitest teeth ever <laughs> i do like a purple based gloss or a purple based red or a purple based you know like rebel by mac is a beautiful like purpley undertone lipstick color that's really pretty on just about any skin tone that i can i've ever seen i've tried that color on everybody when i used to work there and not one single person did it look bad on i mean i'm sure they're they exist maybe like olive but even then i'm like no i'd like to see it <laughs> i'd like to see it because you never know and then for the uh little jewel i have these packets that i got and it's it came with like a ton it, this whole thing came in one bag and it came with all of these jewels and i just pop them wherever i want today i was feeling like having a little fake looking piercing above my lip but sometimes i do them here and here sometimes i do them on the inner corners you could do them in the center of your brows whatever you feel like do them as beauty marks wherever you want on your face and they're just a fun little jewel that will catch the light and uh I just could I don't like to commit to permanent piercings and holes in my face but it's fun to have these when you're just wanting to play and that's it that's that's the look today guys that's it nothing too crazy I'm gonna go try on all the clothes and film that and put a little video together and then after that I really like to make zucchini bread so <laughs> that's gonna be on the uh, to do we're starting off with the dress that I just got last week I think that pattern looks just like it, but we're gonna put the turtleneck underneath it. I didn't find a jean shirt that I thought would look right with this. All of them were too, I don't know, they were tattered and old and just not good quality, but I loved this so much. I loved it so much. So I'm gonna put this jean jacket with that. And then I'm thinking about belting it with this belt, which is actually, isn't this Ralph Lauren? Yeah, so that's funny because this look is Ralph Lauren and that is a Ralph Lauren belt. So we're gonna put that together as outfit number one. Outfit number two. I actually didn't have to thrift for anything for this look. I'm just gonna go with a pleated skirt that I already had. I thrifted this when I went to Everett. This I got at a local boutique that's a vintage boutique here and it's called Scorpio Rising. And then this is a Zara knit vest. It's actually like a leathery vest, but I really like it. I think it'll piece this whole outfit together really nicely and look somewhat similar to what they have going on. Of course, I'm not doing an uh, exact replica of what they have. I'm making this my own with what I have mixed with what I found. Okay, for the next one, this is the Anasubi look and I'm gonna go with these plaid pants. I really hope these fit. If they don't, I do have a pair that I have that will fit, I just don't love them. Um, I love this shirt. I, it looks very, very similar. I was like, <gasps> when I saw it, I just, I gasped. I audibly guessed. This is actually a Alice and Olivia, ironically, <laughs> slip dress that is meant for underneath a dress that I have that was Alice and Olivia. And this is the underdress, but it was a separate. It wasn't attached, so I can use this for other things. And so I thought that could be my slip dress until I find a better one. I am still on the hunt for a slip dress. And then this hat I thought would be pretty cute with it. I got this at an antique store up in Everett. This one I'm really excited about. This is the Tom Brown black and white look. I am gonna actually use this skirt for it. Even though the skirt that they had looked boucle or like a tweed fabric and to the floor really fitted. I just wanna use this skirt because I think I would actually wear this quite a bit for work. As a makeup artist, I wear a lot of black and I just loved it. So we're gonna use that instead. And then for the shirt, I'm going for a mixture of patterns like they have. So I'm gonna wear this little scotch and soda shirt. And then this lovely gap 
jacket. I'm gonna wear this all winter. I'm so glad I decided to get it. I was really on the fence because it was just too hot, but I love it. And so I think that this will look really nice and really be able to replicate that Tom Brown look. And I love that it's belted. I love me a cinched in waist. gonna go with this Lueve look. I could not find a skirt that I thought looked like something I would wear similar to that. But I do have this, which I would love to still use. It's a very spring, summery skirt, but I never wear it. It's pretty long, so I think it'll help replicate that length that they have in that dress, because that's probably what I love the most about it, is it looks like it's to the floor. But what I can do is just pop my Prada thrifted uh, sport coat over top. This is like a double XL. I got it really big, oversized from the men's department I think even on the real real but it's Prada it's a really nice quality and I think it'll look kind of cool over top of that and then with that Zara lacy top that I got oh I love this this is gonna look so nice under things over things just with a black bra you guys know how I feel about black bras with see-through stuff I love it people don't always get it but I get it I love it and I think that'll look really chic with the right outfit so this will be a staple Okay, so I'm about to make this zucchini bread, and this is a recipe that I got from Sally's Baking Addiction. This is the same recipe blog that I do my crusty bread, so I figured I love that bread so much, maybe I'll like her zucchini bread as well. So we're gonna just talk through the ingredients really quickly, and you guys are welcome to go to her website to make it yourself. I'll link that below so that you guys can access that. We will be using 220 grams of flour. I haven't measured that out yet, because I'm gonna do it in this bowl on camera. All of the dry ingredients that are like the seasonings and baking powders. So this is a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, salt, cinnamon, nutmeg, egg, brown sugar, and white granulated sugar. We have some vegetable oil and then they said optional add-ons. So they recommended nuts or chocolate chips. I have a few chocolate chips left. We also have vanilla sour cream, the biggest zucchini you ever did see. My neighbor has a lovely vegetable garden and she has been bringing me over all the extra veggies that she's just like abundantly overtaken with and I she said hey do you want any of these vegetables and I all caps and like five exclamations said yes nothing better than local and very local vegetables and fruit I wanted to light a candle the blue sage and lemon candle if only it could have been a rainy day. It would have made this more perfect. But this is a new one for me. I've never made zucchini bread. I'm really excited about it. So this is now on the tear. And now we want to shred one and a half cups or 180 grams of zucchini. Let's do this situation. Get it kind of shaped and ready to go. The oven's already preheated. 220 grams of flour. I've been putting all of my powders and like a lot of things in this. Flour comes, there's so many memes about it. Flowers come in the worst possible container. <laughs> like have we not thought of anything else? So I love just repackaging it into these giant glass jars. And I saved the scoop from my last Vega protein and now I use it for my flour. 220 grams of flour that needs to be in here. Love it. Whisk the flour, the baking powder, baking soda, salt, cinnamon, nutmeg together in a bowl. So I've already got all of those pre-mixed and I'm just gonna toss those in. I love the way that flour feels, so don't mind if I just throw my hand in here because I love the feel of mixing these dry ingredients. I've washed my hands, set that aside. Now it says in another bowl, it wants you to put the oil, the brown sugar, the granulated sugar, eggs, applesauce, which I didn't have, and it says you can use sour cream instead. This much. Okay, and it says to mix these two together, but don't over mix it. So that's why I'm not gonna use my KitchenAid mixer today because I don't wanna over mix this. You just want to pour the wet ingredients into the dry, and then don't over mix. 
and that, that's something with most breads, scones, things like that. I think it makes it too dense. So we're gently folding and whisking. And then I have some chocolate covered almonds in here. I think I wanna crush those. And now we have some crushed chocolate almonds and folding that in gently. There's our zucchini bread. It says to put this into the oven for about 55 to 70 minutes. Okay, well, there we go. We have some zucchini bread cooling. I just grabbed it out of the oven and put a knife in it and it came out clean. So we're just gonna let this rest. It smells so good and it's actually perfect because I talked to my mom the whole time. <laughs> it was in the oven so it helped time go by. And by the time it was going off, we we're hanging up the phone and voila, we have bread parchment paper. It just lifts right out. Then your little dish is clean and just crust free and won't be covered in stains. And then your bread is easier to slice into. really good. I really like the cranberry. So delicious. Good morning. I was just playing with a little bit of this uh, Jojo's hair. <laughs> That's Jojo. That's the buddy. I'll show you him in a <laughs> He said, I'm going to jump up on your lap. Hello, Jojo. Wow, that was quite an acrobatus. Oh, thank you, that's my lip gloss. This you go, you stay down. He just got dropped off this morning. He's here with us for the weekend. And yeah, I just thought I would show you guys my makeup because I, I always try to do something weird just to see what it would look like. What would upside down eyeliner look like? Well, it looks like this, if you were wondering. Literally have it pointing downward. I genuinely just wanted to play. So I was inspired from the class I took. Mac had a Mac Pro class Zoom for people who were at home and then it was in New York and there was makeup artists in the audience as well and a lot of like social media influencer type people. Chantel paid the uh, Monse show last season and you will see her backstage at every show. And he feels like we're really in a makeup renaissance. And I wanted to know what's your take on that? Heck yeah. yeah. Heck and thank yes. God, right? Yes. Like we COVID kind it. of, yeah, that cool. was, we were all just barefaced and I'm glad that it's bold and, you know, unconventional and unapologetic. So I'm really excited that we're kind of back in a big way. Yeah, makeup is back. I mean Three makeup artists taught the class and each one contributed, sorry, I'm out of breath because I just ran downstairs, kind of trending look for autumn and winter. The first one was the kind of frozen, ethereal, dreamy fairy look almost. And then the second one was celestial, futuristic, alien, whatnot. And then the third one was romantic grunge. So thinking like a grunge, but in a romantic way. And how would you translate that to makeup? And all three of them did a look on the models. I was so inspired by it. It was really interesting to watch. And so I feel like I did all three. <laughs> I feel like I have the dreamy fairy celestial grunge going on wanting to go romantic grunge but then i was like oh i really want to do the glitter and maybe i'll do the alien and then it just kept going and i even put a little like star and this is just me playing but if any of you guys want to know what i did if you're curious with the makeup here i started out with the pat mcgrath and i did this really bright pink as a light wash all over my eyelid except for the highest point of my brow bone i avoided that but i just did a light wash of pink all over and then I took this almost grayish color, did that on the outer edge, smoked it out a little bit on the edge. Then I grabbed a black pencil, which is the new Give one. I decided to keep this one and keep the black pencil that doesn't have shimmer in it in my makeup kit. So this one will just be the one I have for my own personal use. But it has just a little bit of like a glimmer glitter in it. And I did that and just dragged it out. I just thought it would be interesting. 
At first I was starting to do like a fox eye and drag it down this way too. I erased it. I didn't like the way it looked. So I just kept it pointing down on this one end to see how this looks. I'm curious what this will look like on camera, what this looks like in person when I see myself in the mirror and different lighting and angles and yeah to see how it looks and then after that I did well <laughs> because they brought it up in the class old gold has been discontinued but people in the audience were saying when are you guys like do you, are you guys gonna bring it back and they made this big hole to do about how old gold is apparently asked for quite a bit and they don't know if it's going to be brought back or not. They also featured three items that haven't released yet. Well, they didn't feature them. They used them, then couldn't talk about it. I was like, oh, what are these things? And one of the makeup artists said she had like five backup old golds in her kit. And I was like, dude, I have one from an old Christmas collection from forever ago. And this thing is full, like all the way up. So I'm so glad that I have some old gold to play with because I definitely think I'm going to use this in autumn. So I'm going to keep this on my vanity so that I remember to just pat it on my eyelid. It's just a really crazy cool rusty gold color. See it? It looks like the same exact color as my watch. And then it's a lot of products. And I don't expect you guys to recreate this look with these exact products. But if you have similar stuff, I really like these really random. They're almost like lip balm with packed glitter inside. So when you grab the glitter, it's got a little bit of a, it's not wet or anything. It just has like a unique feel to it. It's just really packed in glitter, but you can tap it over top of anything and it immediately applies. You don't even have to wet it. So it's just really fun to just tap that over top of whatever it is that you're doing. And it gives that, that fairy glitter look. And um, it's fun. It doesn't matter what age you are. You can do this at any age. Don't let people fool you and make you think that glitter is for kids and that adult women can't wear it. Like, that is so annoying. I hate rolls more than anything. And um, then I really did conceal my lips with concealer so that I can put my Lawless gloss over top because this is my favorite. It's like my favorite lip gloss ever. This is actually the old bottle I have. The brand new one I just recently got is in my purse. But there's just enough left in here for me to just keep it on my vanity. That's it. But look what I got. I'm so stoked. Look at this. This is Dolly Beauty, Dolly Parton's lipstick. She has about four colors. One of them did sell out already. This is Rosebud, so this one's like a rose color. And I love collection lipsticks from um, celebrities that I admire or love. Yeah, look at that. Isn't it so pretty? Oh my gosh. It's so pretty. <laughs> I love it, and check it out. It's a button that releases the lipstick. That is cool, Dolly. That is cool. And it has a very, like, rosy, perfumey kind of fragrance to it. So let's take this off and I'll try this on. All right, let's try her on. This rosy, it's got such a strong fragrance to it. It's actually a really pretty color. I think that suits me nicely. Signatures on the front, and then it's just covered in fabulous rhinestones. I just look at how pretty stuff like this looks in light. Oh, it's so pretty. The Mariah Carey one, when I this came out, I remember just being like, ooh, like I'm just so overtaken by sparkle so quickly and easily. I just love sparkle. So gorgeous, I love it. And it's a collector's piece for me, so it's definitely going on the collector makeup cabinet. It's really pretty. So I'll have to play with some looks with this too. Okay, this is almost out. Might be time to throw this one away. A good one to use would also be the ColourPop ones because they have like a really nice shiny oily base and they're pretty, this one's kind of on the more nude side. But anyway, I'm actually just gonna end this now because I have a lot to do this weekend. We baked, we thrifted, we put outfits together and we did some makeup and that should, that should do it for the week, right? I think so. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next week. I like to share that.